Yes, Nvidia just launched the RTX 4070, which is based on the Ada Lovelace AD104 GPU. Just like the existing RTX 40 series cards, the 4070 too features Nvidia's 3rd gen RT cores and 4th gen Tensor cores to support ELSS3. So, the most important question to ask is, is this a good GPU? Especially at the price of $599. Let's find out in this video today. Just when we thought that the Founder Edition card for this generation stopped at the RTX 4080, Nvidia surprised us with an RTX 4070 Founders Edition. This is definitely a good news for the Founders Edition collectors of course. And looks like the decision of dropping the RTX 4080 12GB is the reason why we're not seeing any RTX 4070 Ti FEs in this generation. So a quick look at the card. The RTX 4070 FE here shares a similar design as the 4090 and 4080 FEs while having more or less the same size as the RTX 3070 FEs. The power connector is the 12VHP WR as usual and since it has a rated TGP at 200 watts, the included adapter is still a 2.8-pin PCIe to 1 12VHP WR and not a 1 to 1 adapter. Also, this is a dual slot card and with its size, it's a great option for those who are planning on small form factor builds. As for the output, we have the usual 3 display port and 1 HDMI. And that's about it. It's time for the exciting stuff. We use this list of hardware to benchmark the RTX 4070 and we are comparing it against different cards such as the RTX 3080 OC and the RTX 4070 Ti so we can have a better idea on the positioning of this card. Starting off with the rest of performance. I'll say the RTX 4070 is still a capable card for 4K gaming to a certain extent. Even without DLSS, being able to maintain above average 60 FPS in some of the titles. More demanding titles like Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077 are out of the question of course. It's not exactly overpowering the 3080 entirely but it's interesting to see how both cards trading blow in the titles we've tested and as nvidia specifically highlighted that the rtx 4070 is made for 1440p gaming maintaining above 100 fps is a piece of cake for this card however the rtx 3080 is still a powerful card even today especially a factory overclock one like what we have right here which can still perform better than the 4070 most of the time 1080p is definitely an easy task for all the cards here and that's not much to talk about right now we're just doing it for the sake of completion And up next is the ray tracing performance. The graphics settings used are the usual very high or ultra preset. And of course, DLSS quality preset. That's DLSS 2 though. Based on the test results, I'd say the RTX 4070 is still capable of 4K gaming. In some ways, being able to maintain above 60 FPS on average on some of the titles we've used in this test. The exception will be Cyberpunk, of course, Metro Exodus, and Watch Dogs Legion. These titles are just too much for both the 4070 and 3080 to handle. Changing the DLSS preset to maybe performance or balance will give you a boost in FPS, which I think it's still reasonable for 4K gaming. The reason for me to say that is because the differences are hardly noticeable most of the time 
especially in fast-paced games. Well, unless you are intentionally finding all the artifacts in each and every frames. While we're not exactly seeing above 100 FPS on all the titles in 1440p, they are still way higher than the usual 60 FPS. And for most people, this is considered a smooth gaming experience. Even for demanding titles like Cyberpunk, we're still getting a reasonable 60 FPS on average. For other games though, both RTX 3080 and 4070 still trading blows in 1440p. But we can see that the latter is performing similarly or better on most occasions. As for 1080p, it's pretty much the same as what we've seen in the rest of performance tests, with both the 3080 and 4070 getting more than 100 FPS in almost every title test. Alright, now for the special source that the RTX 40 series has, DLSS 3. We are seeing more games supporting DLSS 3 now, which is a good thing because it has features called the frame generation that further spools the FPS. Of course, that includes Reflex as well, which helps to improve the overall responsive time. Aside from Cyberpunk, other games like F122, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, is that how you read it? Diablo 4, Hogwarts Legacy, and many more supports DLSS 3 now. We expect more to come soon, so stay tuned for that. While the 3080 is still a powerful card that can go up against the 4070, the LSS 3 is something that is only available on the newer RTX 40 series GPU due to hardware limitations. So if you're planning on experiencing the LSS 3 yourself, the RTX 4070 is the most affordable option right now. Moving on to the synthetic benchmarks, the results aren't exactly the same as what we've seen in our game's benchmarks. For benchmarks that focus on game performance like 3 d Mark and Unigine Superposition, the 3080 is actually getting higher scores than the 4070. Benchmarks that focus more on content creation tasks like Blender, Octane Bench, V-Ray, on the other hand, shows that the 4070 is actually better. Now for the thermals and power draw. Although the RTX 3080 OC and 4070 perform similarly based on our test results, the difference in power draw is actually huge. At peak, the 3080 OC can draw up to 375 watts, while the 4070 only draws about 203 watts at max. Clearly, the 4070 is better when it comes to power efficiency. Not to mention that the 3080 OC requires a 3 PCIe 8 pins to power up, while the 4070 only requires a single 12V HPWL cable or the included adapter you use. As for the temperature, the differences is not that much. Both the average GPU temperature and hotspot temperature are somewhat cooler on the 4070. So let's take a look at the bigger picture here. Among all the three cards, the 4070 might not look like it's consistently better than the two other cards, but the 4070 has a few new tricks up its sleeves. A lot of people will argue that they can just get a used 3080 or 3090 at the same or if not lower price instead of spending on a new 4070. A lot of people will also cite that the 3070 launch price is at 499 while the new 4070 is at a higher price of 599. It's your choice on how you want to spend your money but you know you'll be missing out on not just the LSS3. There are a lot more features the RTX 40 series cards can offer such as AV1 video encoding, the new RTX video super resolution or also known as RTX VSR that is also coming to VLC player. And of course other 
AI accelerated features on content creation tools. For a starting price at $599, I'd say the 4070 is still a fair price to pay for the performance and all the new features it has to offer right now. So that's all for this video. What's your take on the 4070? Is it a yay or a nay for you? Well, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one.